Hey, welcome back to the channel, and I want to introduce you to our latest design called the Void. It's a ring inspired by quasars. We'll be using opal, strontium illuminate glow crystals, a variety of mica color pigments, and a titanium ring core to hold it all together. And for those of you that don't know what a quasar is, they are the colorful and powerful jets of particles that are emitted by black holes. They're one of the absolute coolest and mysterious phenomenons that occur in our universe. Here's a nice photo of that for your reference. So let us know how you think we did at the end of the video. All right, the first step in our journey is we need to prepare all of our glow powders and color pigments and get those set in place. We want this ring to glow nicely in the dark and we want it to have a lot of color. We want it to be really nice and vibrant. So we'll go ahead and prepare all of those. We're using our little jewelry scale here to weigh out the correct proportions. And once we've got those all figured out, we'll mix them together in their own respective vials. We'll go ahead and set those aside and move on to the next step, which is the ring core. This is going to be the foundation of the ring. It's really important. Let's get started on that. So you can see we're using our big power saw here to cut off a piece of our material. This is an aerospace grade of titanium alloy. It perfectly fits the theme of this ring. When I think of space and metal, I think of titanium. It's super strong and incredibly durable. It'll give this ring a really strong structure and make sure it'll last a lifetime. All right, we've got a ring blank cut out here. We're ready to move on over to the lathe. We're gonna secure it in place in the jaws. That way we can begin the boring process. First, we'll use a center drill to create a divot. Then using a double fluted twist drill, we'll continue cutting all the way through the material until we've got ourselves a half inch hole straight all the way through the center of it. Now we can switch over to a tungsten carbide lathe bit. This will remove a bit of material with each pass and we'll just continue that process till we're at the size we need to be. Now here's a fun fact about quasars. If you don't know much about them, you really do need to go read up on them on Wikipedia or elsewhere online. They're incredibly interesting, but here's just one little thing that kind of shows just how crazy these things are. They can be so powerful that just the light coming off of them can outshine entire galaxies. Just one quasar can outshine an entire galaxy, including our very own Milky Way. That's just incredible. Okay, back to the ring making. We're working on the outside diameter of the ring now. We've got it mounted up in one of our Patrick Adair Supplies expanding ring mandrels. Shameless plug there, we've got a link to our supplies company in the description. And again, using tungsten carbide lathe bits, we are repeating the same steps we did to the inside, just now on the outside. We're shaving it down until we've got the correct outer diameter that we want. All right, we've got it to size. Now we need to make it comfortable to wear. So we'll get started on some shaping and polishing steps. Now titanium, it's an awesome material. It's got just about every property you'd want in an aerospace application. That's why it's super common there. And for a lot of the same reasons, it's actually really good for jewelry. Those the two things kind of go hand in hand, believe it or not. So first it's incredibly lightweight, making it really comfortable. Um, and it's never going to oxidize or react with anything. So that means it's gonna last forever and it's not gonna bother your skin, even if you have allergies to certain metals. So that's great. Typically, if something's really good for space, it's also really good to go on your finger. That's just something I've learned over the years. All right, with a quick polish, we've got our ring core finished and prepared. We're ready to move on to the next step. We're gonna get started working with our opal. For this, we've selected a piece of our Bello Opal, which is a lab-grown opal that has an amazing amount of vibrance and color shift to it. So this is a really big chunk. So using a diamond lapidary saw, we're gonna slice off a smaller section because we don't need nearly this much for this project. And you can see it's kind of got this color and nice shine to it right now, but watch when it comes off the saw and it's wet, it kind of mimics what it'll look like once it's got a good polish and you can see this amazing color it has. It's really cool. 
Now in order to inlay our opal, we need to crush it down into smaller fragments. So we'll get started on that process, just slowly hammering away until we've got these pieces just about the right size that we'll want. Here's one of my favorite steps in the process. It's using these mesh screens in order to sort out the pieces to the exact size we want. There's something about this step that's just so satisfying. It just organizes everything just how you want. And don't worry about all of the extra fragments that aren't the correct size. We're gonna save those, set them aside for later. We'll use those in future ring projects. All right, we're ready to go ahead and start inlaying this ring. We've got our ring core in place here on the mandrel. We're gonna put down a thin layer of our AstroTech CA adhesive. That'll make the surface of the titanium tacky. That way all the pieces will cling to the surface. We'll start with a solid black backdrop. I start all my space rings this way. That represents the dark void of space. And we're gonna build up from there. Moving on, we'll apply a careful layer of the opal that we just prepared. We want really good, even coverage here. We want this ring to be really nice, vibrant, and colorful. This is gonna make a big difference, but you don't wanna go overboard. We need to leave enough space in the ring for the other colors. That way we can really kind of match the look of an actual quasar. Now, little by little, we'll start sprinkling each color in place. It's important to dust it in really careful you want enough sprinkled in there that you get a good vibrant result, but not too much or else the ring's gonna look patchy and just kind of weird. Uh, so you gotta just be careful. You kind of dust it in there layer by layer. That way you get some really good depth and add some nice layering to the ring. It's gonna give it a really awesome, natural, realistic look. All right, that's all the main components in place, but the ring definitely doesn't look like much yet. It needs to be comfortable to wear. So how are we gonna fix that? We're gonna go ahead and add a nice thick layer of our UV hardening resin. This is a really special resin for jewelry applications. It gives us two really important properties. The first being scratch resistance. So it's really hard, it's really robust. And then the second is its clarity. We need this to be absolutely crystal clear. And what's great about this is that it starts clear and it stays clear. It's not gonna yellow or fade or oxidize over the time. This is a really nice material for this application. Using a UV flashlight, we can harden the resin enough to hold it in place, but now we need to throw it in a high-powered UV bath to really properly cure it and get that full hardness that we need. Once that's done, we just need a few more finishing touches to get this ring looking its best and ready to be worn. First, we'll get rid of some of the excess bulk material, and to do that, we'll use the belt sander. And then for some of the finer details, we're gonna switch back over to the lathe, and we'll use our Dremel for this. We'll carefully start sculpting away the ring profile until we've got a really nice domed finish. Now with some sandpaper and AstroTech jewelry polish, we are completing the final steps of giving this ring its beautiful glassy clear finish. And here we are. I think this ring is just breathtaking. It has such a detailed and intricate look to it. It's got these awesome saturated and vibrant colors to go along with it. And in the dark, it's got this whole other look to it that's really special. I love rings that glow. 
Anyways, let us know what you think down in the comments. Do we match that look of the Quasar? I think we really did kind of nail it with this one. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to order one, we will have them available on our website, patrickandairdesigns.com. Thank you, and have a nice day.